good to have you on. Um, this week is becoming... I have to say one thing, Trev, I'm sort of glad it's arrived because it's been going on for blimmin' ages. Um, I wanted to ask you about the first story that most people have been concentrating on today. Uh, a second reform candidate uh, has suspended a campaign. This is Georgie David, who was standing in West Ham and Beckton, uh, defected to the Tories because she says, and I quote, the <coughs> vast majority of her fellow candidates are racist, misogynistic and bigoted. Uh, and she's frustrated and dismayed, she says, by Nigel Farage's failure to tackle concerns about reforms candidates. Before you say anything, this was Richard Tice, who I got on straight that news at four, the beginning of the show. This is what he said, Trevor. If it sounds dodgy, if it smells dodgy, then guess what? It probably is dodgy. And what this is that you've just referred to is a coordinated campaign of dirty tricks by CCHQ, which started just before nominations closed for this general election. Inducements, job offers... Uh, offers of safe council seats, they're all being given to a bunch of candidates in order to try and make them defect with a whole load of totally outrageous, unsubstantiated allegations that frankly are libelous. Trevor Kavanagh, what's your response to the story and to Richard Tice's condemnation of the Tories there? Well, he might be right. I don't know. I'm not sure he does. Um, but the thing that makes you wonder is that the Tories are so incompetent, they can't even think up clean tricks, let alone dirty tricks. Um, I mean, they haven't got anything in the way of a preparation for a snap election. And the idea that they've been plotting by putting candidates up that are actually sleepers for the Tory party does sort of beg a belief in that sense that they've got no strategies. I mean, I, and listen, please take what I'm going to say, because, I, I, you know, I spent a lot of time reading your stuff. You have been around many, many elections. We had somebody on this show not half an hour ago, a Labour activist, who said that he worked for the Labour Party during Theresa May's election in, I think, 2017 or whatever it was. And, 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 she, and he said that was bad. I would venture to suggest that this Tory campaign has been a complete bloody shambles from the first moment when Sunak, apart from the ten people he sent down to Ladbrokes, nobody seemed to know about it in the Tory party, the grassroots, the cabinet, there wasn't the preparation. That thing that if you're in government, presumably the one thing you've got is you can prepare yourself and then call it and be on the front foot against the opposition. He managed to throw that out the window. You look at D-Day which I think is an absolute disgrace, and I think many, many people would share that opinion. You look at the, 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 the gambling, and then you think of, never mind the ballots last week, and you think of Sunak almost on the front foot, now attacking Starmer and saying, you know, how are you going to pay for this? We haven't heard anything. I think it's the most... I think it's been a shambles. Would you agree? I can't think of a better word. I mean, what we've got... The, uh, Downing Street is full of naive incompetence. Uh, people who are ready to go off and put money on a uh, an election date that they've got insider trading knowledge on, but not competent enough to go out and book the advertising space that they need in the newspapers through the campaign. That space was grabbed by the Labour Party, which heard the rumours uh, 24 hours in advance, went out and got all the agencies under their uh, under their cloak, and they are they've dominated dominated all of the news channels with their advertising campaign. So that's just one example of the fact that they're tripping up over their own feet. They have no idea. They've never fought a campaign before. And you need seasoned veterans who know, that, know the way their, their way around. Them, have you been thing. surprised by how incompetent Sunak's government has been in terms of since he called the election? Have you been shocked or is it actually something that you could see coming, Trevor? Well, I'd love to be able to say that they were caught unawares, but they caught us unaware. So the least they should do is to take advantage of the fact that they had the inside knowledge. Mm. No, I'm not surprised. It's a it's a tragedy, a farce, and a complete uh, shambles. And they're paying the price for it. And I and I, I I was saying this earlier to Benedict Spence, who couldn't agree with me more. Uh, there's this whole story today about how Sir Keir Starmer. Uh, hits back at Tory claims that, that you know, as the Labour leader, uh, he, he won't work after 6pm on a Friday. He likes to spend time with his kids. This doesn't mean that, you know, if somebody launches a weapon towards us, or there's a, of course he's going to work. But actually, people are saying, fair enough, whatever. If, if the best the Tories have got, Trev, 
is to say he's going to be a part-time Prime Minister. You say he's going to win then. Don't give him a supermajority. You've given up on it then. There's nothing... You know, I, I said this all week. I wanted the Tory party to be challenging the would-be Prime Minister about how he's going to pay for all these things he promises. That's what I think a lot of people in this country want, and they haven't done that. And Starmer, we keep saying the Ming Vars don't drop the ball, really going to attack him for finishing on a... Fr is that the best the Tories have got, Trevor? That's laughable. Well, it's an ingredient. I mean, frankly, the idea that he's going to stop work at six is absurd. Yeah. Um, luckily for him, everybody else stops work at six. I mean, other <laughs> if they go in on Friday. Oh no, that's me. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's right. The, the weekend starts on Wednesday now, and people are working from home, and they end up they'll end up getting a, a national a minimum wage soon for doing nothing. And I think that uh, this is the danger of the. Keir Starmer announcement because it encourages those people who switch off their phones instead of being on call as you and I have been all our working lives. When work has needed to be done, we're there to do it. And I just set, think that on its own sets a bad example. Whether it's a, a campaign thing for the Tories that latch on to is another matter. But I mean, it is absurd. It's a bit like Joe Biden having his, his afternoon nap every day and going home to his uh, um, seafront villa on weekends for three nights. Uh, listen, couldn't agree more. Um, I just wanted to ask you about something that, that I've sort of canvassed opinion on this week. I find it really ironic, and I know that you were front and centre of Brexit, and I know that you've got strong opinions, but he here we were five years ago in the middle of this sort of... I mean, this country was split. You were for or you were against. It ruined friendships, relationships, working situations. It, it caused... Uh, huge fissures, I think, in, if for want of a better phrase, in the United Kingdom. Anyway, the British people voted to leave the European Union and we were derided by Europe. Europe called us far right wings and we're all nutters. I, do you share with me the irony of the fact that as Marion Le Pen rises to power in France, thank you, Macron, and good night, thank God, when you look at Belgium, when you look at Holland, right, they're all going to the right with PR. And we're about to vote in a socialist government. Are we? I mean, I thought we were in front of Europe. Now we're back of them. I, I don't, I don't, I mean, to me, that is so ironic, Trevor. Well, we look as if we're out of step, don't we, yeah. Jeremy? But the fact is, we are not voting in, in with any enthusiasm whatsoever, a left-wing socialist government. We're voting out with huge enthusiasm, a right-wing or right-of-centre or even a Blairite Tory government. So it's a little bit more complicated than that. And I think that we are seeing a revolution going on in uh, Europe, which is basically following the vapour trail of the British Brexit decision. Mm. And what we did then was the right thing. And I think it's been vindicated in many ways that the Remainers will never accept in terms of our increased trade with the rest of the world and the fact that our trade with Europe has not been diminished whatsoever by leaving it. So I think the reasons we left were simply because we wanted to make our own decisions. The tragedy is that under Boris and under other Tory leaders, we didn't. We didn't take back the control that we promised the British people we would in 2016. Do you think if the Labour Party get in on Thursday, they will row back on Brexit in any way? I mean, I'm not just talking about trade. Do you, do you believe them when they say the British people voted leave and that's fine, or do you think they will subtly try and reinvent it all? Well, I think that they've had their pitch queered somewhat by what's happening in Europe. And those elections, both the, part, the, the, the European Union elections and now in France and across the whole of the European Union, will and must give them pause for thought. The idea that, uh, and I'm sure that it is an idea they've considered very deeply, of us rejoining the common, uh, the European Union's uh, freedom of movement policy, I think it would be absolutely anathema. I think they would lose the support of the British people, at least a very large chunk of them, literally overnight if they dreamed of doing so. So I think they'll be much more circumspect about this than they would have been before those elections took place in Europe. I said to somebody the other day, for me it's also very interesting, Trevor, about um, the aftermath. We've always said that it's easier from the side to, to, to criticise. Somebody said to me, which I keep 
spouting, you know, the way to win an election is to gather together a bunch of middle class and working class disillusioned people and tell them, you know, what's wrong with their lives and who's to blame for it, not actually give them any scenarios. And, and, and I think that very quickly, personally, to burst opinion, that Labour will win. But I think it will unravel. And I think the tent's so wide, as I keep saying, the minute they brought Natalie Elphick in, I thought, geez, geez, he'll have anybody in the Labour Party. And I think from that moment, everybody will be wanting a part. And I, and I, and I think in six months or a year, somebody, it was Harry Cole, colleague yours, he said to me earlier, he said, if he wins, he's got to go to NATO in Washington on Tuesday and deal with Giorgio Maloney from Italy and Marilyn Le Pen's young man if he gets in. And actually, are we out of step suddenly with NATO because we voted a Labour Party, gov a Labour, a Labour government in? Yes, and I think the big problem for Keir Starmer who has somersaulted a new turn on every single promise and uh, measure that he's uh, adopted since he became Labour leader, is that the Labour Party reeks of hypocrisy. Mm. The other thing is that as Tony Blair and Peter Mandelson, who after all are the messiahs of the Blairite New Labour revolution, have twice um, effectively criticised Starmer without naming him for not laying out his manifesto clearly and uh, precisely. Because if you don't have a manifesto that can be delivered and promised and delivered, then you don't have the consent of the British people. You don't have the proviso that everything that's in a manifesto uh, is sacrosanct when it comes to House of Lords uh, revision. Uh, if it's in the manifesto, it is automatically passed. But they haven't got a manifesto. All the promises they're making are vague, open-ended, and, in, and, in they're going, and, and, and that's the frustration for a lot of Tories, which is why there's the surge towards reform, because they don't seem, Trev, to have been picked up on this. Just, just to finish, you've been around this sort of business for a long time. What do you believe your experience tells you about Thursday? I know if I hear one more person say a vote hasn't been cast, I know that. Well, some postal word and said if they haven't gone via Royal Mail. Um, do you... Do you believe it will be a Tory wipeout? I believe it won't be. I believe they'll get between 150 and 199 seats and the majority will be about 150. What do you, with your experience, think, Trevor? Well, I think pretty much the same. I, I, I've done some straw polling of my own among people who were, in fact, determined to give the Tory party a kicking and vote for reform. They changed their mind literally in recent days and for various reasons, I think, because of the outburst about Putin being the most admired leader and so on. Various incidents, of, uh, and also the risk that there might be a supermajority which strips the House of Commons of a proper opposition. I think thinking voters are now pausing for thought. And and I think they've also, uh, you know, given his due, Starmer, uh, Sunak actually performed very well in that uh, BBC And led debate. most well, people well. who contact this show to say, where the hell's that person been for four weeks? Yeah, but he's, it's come at the end, admittedly, and you're right, where has it been? But I think it's come in time to make some people pause over their ballot paper and put their cross, perhaps reluctantly, very reluctantly, alongside the Tories. I do think we need whatever happens at a credible opposition. Trevor, thank you so much indeed. Always a pleasure to have you.